Coming up on All About Android this week, we discuss Google getting out of the tablet business, Android Auto's new look, Xiaomi's Mi CC brand for the youngins, Harry Potter, Wizards Unite, your email, and a whole lot more coming up next on All About Android. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Captera. Find the right tools to make an informed software decision for your business. Captera is software selection simplified. Visit Captera's free website at captera.com slash AAA. And by LegalZoom, check out LegalZoom today to see how they can make life better for you and your business. Visit LegalZoom.com and enter AAA at checkout for 10% off with LegalZoom's limited time friends and family discount. And by Behind the Tech, a podcast with Microsoft CTO, Kevin Scott. He talks with tech heroes, interesting people, and folks who have made our modern world possible. Subscribe to Behind the Tech where you listen to your podcasts today. Welcome to All About Android, episode 426, recorded on Tuesday, June 25th, 2019, your weekly source for latest news, hardware, and ask for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence. I am... Oh, yeah, something's in the air. Uh, Flo, Flo is channeling her inner today. Susie I right ha- there. I have a candle on, so, you know, it's it smells like Listen, berries in here. It's like Flo... She she had to turn off the cure to start the show, did and you, now we're gonna do did, it. Ron, did you see my little broken? Heart? I see it. Oh, I see it. Man, I see it. Man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you okay? Flo, Flo, can you turn down the echo in the bunny men? We have to do the show, please. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'll take off my Doc Martens. <laughs> uh, it's good to see you guys. We have joining us for the very first time Joe Hindi from Android Authority. Joe is the apps guy. Is it is it safe to say you are the apps guy at Android Authority? Yes. It's like Absolutely. that. That's your thing, right? Which I feel that is my thing. Tons I, and tons and tons of apps. All the time, every day. Okay, so then I have to ask you, since this is your thing, is life hard for an apps guy these days? <laughs> I feel like it is. A <laughs> little bit, you know. Uh, it's not quite the uh, bustling industry it was a few years ago. Like, these days, I'm just happy when a launcher comes out because that people still read launchers. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that's, that's a meaty app you can talk about. Well, Joe, I, I have to personally exactly. thank you because I'm an avid fan of your writing as every week we need to come up with a new app and I'm scouring yeah. the web for someone else who's someone coming else up with new apps. The work. And often it is you. So thank you, Joe, for making my life easier. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I kind of feel bad for you, though, because I feel like, you know, in our doing the show – we were talking last week it's been seven eight years now whatever we've seen this arc of kind of the the power of apps and the excitement around apps and i feel like we're past the peak of excitement in apps and now it's like everybody has an app and if it's a new and exciting app it's really hard for it to be noticed because everybody has an app and there's a you know and everybody has also on installed on their phones the seven or eight apps that they actually use and so, I don't know, what is your take on that? Do you feel like people are, are way less inclined to install and try out some new apps, or do you think I'm off base? Um, it's. I don't think you're off base at all. I mean, I um, I have an LG G8 sitting in this office somewhere, and it has Nova Launcher installed. And I'm an app guy. I know all the launchers. Mm-hmm. I still just download Nova Launcher when I just want to use a launcher. So I, I think it's more of like a everybody's kind of comfortable with what they've got now. Yeah. Everybody understands what's going on. You know, oh, there's a new launcher. I'm happy with what I've got. It's, you know, it's a little bit more relaxed than it used to be, you know? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, yeah, man, I don't even install third-party launchers anymore. I'm so boring now. I just like take oh, what they have. In my defense, LG's launcher is fairly terrible. Well, that's true. <laughs> Sorry, LG. That's true, and there has been a movement in a lot of a lot of the phones lately of of going a little bit closer to stock, much closer than they've ever been. Um, on a, you know, a lot of hardware manufacturers are doing, but some of them not so much. So uh, let's 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 play a fun game and say what your top five you uh, app use data. Blah, can't talk. talk. What are your top five apps of according to data usage on your phone? 
because that will show you whether or not you know what apps we what apps we use all the time. Like for me, oh. I, I I just went to the cellular data cellular data usage section in the settings. Okay. And for the month of June, the most used apps are Instagram, Pocket Casts, Google Play Music, Slack, and Chrome. Yeah, I've got. I found uh, that interesting. See, I use the digital well-being one because there's a lot of apps that I use that maybe don't always take data. Like, um, oh, that's we'll good. talk about it later. But like Balloons TD6, it's been my bay game for the last couple of weeks, and uh, I've been in that app for two hours and fourteen minutes today. But it didn't ah, send that's any a good data, point. So, so. time use—that's a good—that's a good analysis one too. That's pretty good. Hmm. Uh, how how long of a period are we doing this? Just the last month? Just a month. The month. Yeah. Okay, I'm going from data usage just because that's what you mentioned, Ron. But I don't know if it's the, I don't know if it's the right one for me because uh, Google Play services, <laughs> Google yeah. connectivity services. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Maps, Google. Uh, wow, I'm so boring. And Coinbase, which, mind you, I have not used that app more than Audible. I'm you convinced might, of you that. You might want to look at that app to see what's going on with Coinbase. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so. You know, from a data perspective, I think you're you're right on the money, Joe. Like, I just the apps that I use regularly aren't necessarily the apps that use the most data, right? Apparently, I mean, Coinbase Google uses data usage. Google Play Store, five point nine gigabytes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's, laughs> that makes sense. That's such a great app. What a great I know, app! Right? That I is. use it literally every day. <laughs> Flow, are you? You're looking down. I just don't know if you're. You it's going to be some sort yeah, of meditation my app. My most played game, my most used app is Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, followed oh, by okay. YouTube TV. Yeah, that's a good one. What does that say about me? Uh, followed by Instagram, WhatsApp, and Lawn Chair Launcher. Launcher Launcher. <laughs> and and is, now is that a data use usage or is that well digital well being? Because I don't see now. I, I feel like I need to do digital well being to see because <laughs> that's on Wi-Fi. The digital well-being is going to give the actual, like, yeah, the that's, more that's accurate. The time you're, that's the active time you're spending, not, like, the passive time. Cause data yeah, I don't have that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't realize my screen was on. Um, I want to do, like, a set amount of time. Is there any way to do that? No. Screen time. Well, this is today. Balloons TD6 for some reason. Stay tuned. Chrome, Maps, YouTube, WhatsApp. Okay. I don't know how accurate that really is. I mean, honestly, I use a lot of Google apps probably more than most apps anyways. Um, so, hmm. I, there, there should be a way to do like a range though, is there not? Like for the month or something like that? No, apparently not. I think this from screen speaks time for to... an app market that's currently missing right now, Time's which is open. to tell us exactly what we need to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well that was fun. Um, let's. Uh, I, I I told Kevin, who by the way, Kevin is RTD today. Victor is out sick, and we hope that you feel better, <laughs> Victor. Uh, Kevin, welcome to the show. I'm going to give you lots of lead up to the intro bumpers, uh, starting with this one. Kevin, it is time for the news. Yeah, nailed it. This would be the time when Kevin would normally say something in an old-timey voice, but uh, it's okay. We'll give him a break got tonight. more tabs than Google. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that, that works. <laughs> All right, we made it. Flo, you got the first one. Um, so this story actually ended up breaking late last week. Um, friend of the show, J.R. Raphael and Business Insider both had a lot of uh, reporting about Google's eventual, I guess, they're backing away completely now from producing any more tablets. Now we're talking about Google as the hardware manufacturer, just to be completely clear here. So Google announced that they would stop production of two unreleased tablets, um, the smaller tablets than the Pixel Slate, which would have been released together after 2019. Um, QA testing just didn't meet company standards. Um, whatever that could mean. That could mean uh, something that could also mean didn't meet the company's need to compete. Um, also, there is no sequel to the Pixel Slate, but Google will continue to support it through 2024 just to give people plenty of chance um, to, I guess, age with it. I mean, that's a that's long why time. You buy, that's why you buy well, Chromebooks. That's why you go with yeah. Chrome OS because you want to hold on to it for a while. I'm kidding. 
Um, and I think if they're gonna if they're gonna stop the line, they don't want to you know like what is the obsolescence rate of exactly. that device? They want to make sure they have support for longer than the yeah. standard two or three years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not Android, so they can su right. probably support it a little longer with Chrome OS. Um, so Google's going to focus on the Pixelbook lineup. Possibly we could have a new Pixelbook by the end of the year. Who knows? That would be pretty exciting just because we haven't seen a refresh since the Pixelbook launched. Um, there's also kind of relates a little bit to some of the cutbacks that happened, uh, three months ago. So Google had actually scaled back on some of its in-house hardware development and it's, it's kind of leading to credence that this is the result of it. This is just Google scaling back and saying, we're, we're done with tablets. We're leaving it to everybody else. Again. I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, are you happy Google's finally making, like, taking a stance, I guess, and not just dragging us along for the ride? Yeah, Joe, do you have a do you have an opinion on on tablets as the app guy? I know that apps on on yeah. tablets aren't always <laughs> as flushed out as they probably need to be. But what do you think? Um, I was unaware that Google still made tablets. When was the last time they launched a tablet? Like, how many well years ago was that? Well, I mean, they had the the Pixel Slate. Nexus it's actually 9. the uh, the if it you know the oh, tablet. It's right, it's right here. In fact, <laughs> it happens to be the yeah. tablet that I'm using right now. The yeah, Pixel but it's Slate. not an Android tablet. It's a Chrome OS tablet. Yeah, exactly. Like it, so, the I, last Android tablet was the Nexus Nine from Google. Just yeah, that's what I thought. Years and years and years ago. <laughs> yeah. And like you know, I, I remember there was like the age of tablets. We had the Nexus Seven. We had the Nexus Nine. We had the Nvidia Shield, um, which was my favorite tablet ever. And then it was like just it just disappeared, and oh, so like it doesn't really shock me to hear that Google isn't that doing its, its own tablets anymore. Yeah, I am sad to hear yeah. that there was that they were working on some and that they're not working on them anymore. But it doesn't really shock me, really. I'm guessing that what the, what this kind of alludes to is that they were probably I, I'm guessing working on some sort of a slate uh, Pixel Slate follow up. Like yes, it's not an Android tablet, but it is a Google made tablet. Like it's a tablet that convertible tablet sort of thing. And from what I understand through this, they're not going to do that anymore. Um, so that means that this Pixel Slate will not get a sequel. And Google is committing more to... The, I have so many props today, you guys. The Pixel Book. <laughs> you came prepared. So therefore, I as, a, as of this moment, I close my Pixel Slate. Wow. Cast it aside. I am back to the Pixel Book. Wow, this is like a live hot switch on you the don't show have right to, now. Though. I know, I you feel so still, honored I was here for this. You're supported for the next five years. Like, you don't have to. <laughs> that was a very rash decision you just made, Jason. I don't think, I mean, it, I don't think it was rash because, uh, because the only reason I was staying on the Pixel Slate was because it was Google's latest thing that, that – you know they were they were developing behind. If they're now saying like, "Oh, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to stick to this," then I'm happy to go back to this. And because let's be honest, it's a better device. It just can I, I can't wait, borrow your I can't, the, I can't wait for the flurry of emails in Mountain View tomorrow. They're like Jason Howell switched back to his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you keep waiting for that. I don't think you're going to see it. Um, but you know. We can go down memory lane just one more time because now I have oh. these props here. The Motorola Zoom, uh, Google's very Classic. first tablet, if you remember correctly. So I tried to charge this up uh, ahead of the show because, you know, there's a there's a micro USB port down there. But that's not how you charge it. It had its own proprietary charger, and I totally oh. forgot. It had this tiny little oh. pinhole down it's there. It's first big problem. <laughs> yes, I forgot exactly. about that. So we can't see the honeycomb background pattern. Oh man, I really wanted to show it off too. So I've uh, actually ordered one on Amazon, and it'll come. Of course. And nice. uh, so I can't wait to unearth this time capsule. <laughs> you, have to, I know. you have to res you have to respect Jason's commitment to a gag. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's re it's science. This is science. Yeah, it's science. We're you know we're uh, we're archiving Android yeah. of yore. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I just want to see what apps you have installed on it. I do too. I really, I'm I very curious. What's on there. I, bet you, I bet you, you got Google goggles on there. Maybe I could. Oh, I could have. Uh, what was it? Uh, Google Listen? Was it? Yes. The, the oh, super old podcast app. Um, yeah, we'll see. I, my fear is that I like wiped it 
or something, you know, and that it's like a stock, which I mean, would be cool in its own right too, but we uh, should remember honeycomb in its yeah. initial yeah, state in its purest form. And where we, how far we've come. Yeah. Yes. And and one day we will, when I get that power supply, I'll charge that baby up and we'll take I a look wait. at it. In your prop collection, you don't have a Nexus seven by any chance, do you? I do. <gasps> you have there the original Nexus yes. seven, not the re I, not the black backed reprise. I have both, but this one does I love have that. a, oh, Ouch. Ooh. Yeah, this one, this one had a, a very, I don't know. Actually, I can't remember the story on this. It wasn't me that dropped it, though. I remember that. It wasn't me. Yeah. Um, I love that tablet. Not that spe specific <laughs> one. My tablet, this my tablet Nexus could... 7. That was just, that was a great device. I used the heck out of it. If the tablet could only talk. I know. Mm, memories. Um, and then I'm trying I to think if I, if I have to anything to else to show off. I don't know. It's just the 9. It's just the nine, which I already showed off. So I'll go ahead and just in, in honor of our fallen tablets, uh -huh. uh, Google hey. fallen tablets. It's tab it's tablet of Palooza. Yeah, I was realizing <laughs> the display. Yeah, it is tablet Palooza. The display on this thing here. If you, look at that bend. I wonder Ooh, how that. Oh, wow. Ooh. Well then. Yeah, it's got a little like crack in there. So, okay, so yes, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> oh, exactly. Kevin, bring in the heat. I, I like know. It. Okay, Kevin, <laughs> I see you. He just that, that, yeah, he just he just walked to the yeah. base right there. Uh, All right, so moving okay. on from tablets. Yes, I think it's about time. Um, Unfortunately, so we've been we, we've been following the drama of Huawei and the and the the it was seemingly implosion with the, the U.S. China government relations and Huawei's caught in the middle and that sort of thing and it's setting off just new stories that you would not ever expect to see happen. Um, specifically, Sasha Sagan at PC Mag at PC Mag uh, was supposed to get the Huawei P30 via FedEx shipped from PC Mag's UK writer, Adam Smith, directly to him. So this was a Huawei that was purchased and used in the UK, put into FedEx, sent to the US for his colleague to use uh, related to an uh, editorial story. Instead, FedEx returned the box with the phone back to the UK with the label that says, due to US government issue with Huawei and China government. <laughs> FedEx says a new employee saw a label that listed Huawei and, quote, had a panic attack of sorts <laughs> before sending it back. <laughs> and then FedEx said this was an operational error. And there is – and I want to be very clear of this. There is no ban on private parties shipping a Huawei device in the mail or FedEx or any sort of thing like that. This was an overzealous employee who saw the word Huawei and panicked and <laughs> sent it back. Huawei! And, <laughs> and at least at least they didn't confiscate it. At least the guy got the phone back. Yeah. I would be I would be surprised wouldn't be surprised if they didn't like hold the package and not give it back to the dude. But this is this is just crazy. This is negligence. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it does it really does sound like new employee that just didn't know better. Yeah. It's almost like that employee confused the Huawei story with the Samsung Note 7 story and thought it would literally blow up in his hands. And so he panicked and yeah. sent it back. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Joe, what phone are you using? What's your phone du jour? Um, I'm currently using a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. S10 Plus. my daily driver. Wow. It's a good, that's that's a good a big phone. phone. Do you ever use a Huawei phone? Uh, no, I, I never got the pleasure. They kind of banned it here before I could get one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed they did. Who knows? Maybe someday they'll they'll come back. Um, they're they're actually pretty good phones. I never really cared for their you know talk about a launcher that just I could never get behind. Huawei launchers is just no good. I just can't get behind that launcher. I can't get behind that launcher. Just can't. <laughs> Can uh, you get behind the wheel of an Android Auto though? Palooza. Sorry, I just remembered one of our <laughs> title ideas I had to put up there. I just gave you a nice segue. I just I opened the door <laughs> I to the next the, story. Thank you. <laughs> you opened the door, did you? I Op did to the Android Auto. Opened the front door to the Android Auto story that is all about Android Auto getting an update, a UI update. We saw this at Google I.O. that this was going to happen, and I think we heard about it even earlier than that. But if you went to Google I.O., they had a whole area where they were kind of showing off this new UI and everything uh well it's finally uh rolling out it appears at least to uh connected car systems so it's not rolling out to you know all vehicles certain vehicles are getting this update uh it includes new navigation bar faster startup better ui which also requires fewer points of interaction to get things done which is something you really want when you're driving around uh also dark theme 
Things look a lot darker. Uh, enhanced or display size support and a new notification center that's more friendly for for the driving experience. It's a server side switch, of course, so there's not a whole lot you can do about it. You just kind of gotta wait, and then you'll see it. And uh, yeah, I so. Uh, I have a side note. <laughs> yes. To add to that. Yes. Go. Um, this UI is only for the in-car, uh, heads up display. It's not for the Android auto app on the phone. Right. Because yeah. Cause Android Q is going to have that built in car mode, which is supposed to like, yeah, just, yeah. Which is supposed it's to supposed pow. completely different interface. Absolutely different. Yeah. Which I'm not sold on entirely. I hope I hope when that well, happens. Well, the idea it was looks to put everything on one page because there's too many there's too many too much menu structure in Android Auto right now, and so you have to like constantly tap to get to a thing, which is very dangerous to do at 80 miles an hour. Yeah, don't do that at 80 miles an hour. If it's dangerous to do at 20 miles an hour. <laughs> yes. I Good do it point. When backing out of my driveway sometimes, <laughs> and I stop. I have to remind myself, no, don't do this, fool. There might be something behind you. Right. Do you do this it. and then go. Exactly. Don't go and then do this. It's just no absurd to me because because in my years of being a journalist, I have learned that still the best way to be in a car is with tactile buttons. And they keep trying to put displays in the car and it's just I kind because of they look me the wrong way. Because they, they look good, because they look sexy, because they compete with Tesla. Yeah, but they don't. And yeah, I know. I know. It's frustrating because you, you're not supposed to have all that stuff blaring at you when you're driving. But I but I still don't understand. Okay, so that that's totally a fact that you know, like in, in the state of California, if you're touching your phone that is mounted on the dash, if you t touch it more than like two times or whatever, you could get pulled over. Which how is a cop mm -hmm. going to know you touch it exactly two times or more? So basically, if you're interacting with your phone, you you could get pulled over if if a cop sees it. That is a touch screen, but the Tesla and other vehicles like it have a have a gigantic touch screen, it's and it's huge. built into the interface, the and you're expected eliminated. to interface with it, and you're allowed to in the state. Like I don't think you're. It's yeah. like illegal to control your car on those touch screens. So what is, exactly is the difference? I don't get it. Is it because the phone is smaller? I don't understand. Maybe smaller, harder to see. <laughs> Because you have to take your attention away from the road and the wheel to look at the phone, right. whereas th this display is in the dash and it's you're still looking forward, but you're just kind of kind of looking down to the right instead of you know I don't know. I don't know because, because my it's because they don't move fast enough. These things don't move fast. Like laws and and all of this does not yeah. move fast enough as technology does. That's probably it. That's like, probably you're also referring to the touch we screens not people, going fast enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that happens too. I mean, cell phones. <laughs> Cell phones got banned in the state of California because we kept saying texting and driving, like yeah. teens are texting, like your phone is super dangerous, but we have not done any studies for Tesla drivers right. or any of the new luxury cars that have giant, it's, it's, it's all very, I just am bringing it to everybody's attention so that we remember yes, that really. these things are not perfect. No. <laughs> It's just it's it's always been so confusing to me. Like, what's the difference between touching that that legal Tesla screen and the illegal smartphone? And I'm not I'm not like saying we should be able to touch our smartphones while we drive because I actually don't feel that way. Like, I don't touch my smartphone when I drive now, uh, and it enrages me when I look over and I I saw it today. Someone was driving. I mean, literally, I did not see them oh, look yeah. up, and they were just like on their phone, you know. And I was next to them, and I, I'm just like staring at them and going, "What the?" Hmm. Um, <laughs> That is that is unsafe. Stop it. But uh, today everyone learned Jason and Flo have road rage about people. Oh, the phone. Get off your phone. It's like it's like justified road rage though. It's like it's like it you're, you're you're you know. Yeah, I, <laughs> yes. I'm not escalating that road rage to the next level. I'm just angry right. on the inside, no. I guess. All right, Flo, you got the email. All right, let's now turn that we're this all around. Raged. Let's help. Let's help someone now that we've <laughs> torn down the entire auto industry. Um, so last week, if you tuned in, you might remember that Al had written in wanting only certain apps to play notification sound, otherwise vibrate or silent only. So Craig from Edinburgh, Scotland wrote in and says that they might have a solution. So Craig writes in, I think I may have a solution for you, or at least it's how I have my phone set up. I have set the default notification sound in settings, 
sound, advanced, default notification sound, to none. Now, I read that um, that's the file structure for right. those wondering. So in the settings on uh, the sound panel, this means all apps only vibrate and I set specific apps to make a sound at my discretion. This avoids installing a new app and having it ping with unwanted, unexpected notifications. Not sure if this is what is required, but it works for me. Thank you, Craig, for writing in uh, with a little help for another friend. This is so nice. Yeah, so the idea then would be setting the default on all apps to none and then going into the apps that you want a sound to play and setting those. I wonder if the default... Yeah, I'm trying to understand how that works. Setting it to none, does that like issue a command that then goes into all of those individual apps and sets them to none? Or is it like a blanket like over the top, like, no, everything is none now. And how do you get through, poke through that with the sounds that you need on the apps that you actually want to make a sound? I don't know. But apparently it works for Craig. So you figured it out, so, Craig. Thank you. D uh, just so I remember, this was specific to Android Q beta. No, my solution was because that's what I had installed and I realized that there was a feature coming up in the Q-Beta that was specifically about this. Um, I don't believe that uh, that his, I'm, I'm looking at it now, stock Android 9. So this was just mm. stock Android 9. Um, so there you go. I mean, I'm assuming that Craig also has that because uh, this is what Craig, Craig didn't mention the phone that he's on specifically. But that was part of the email, so I'm hoping that they're on the same page. But anyways, maybe that would work. Right. Sometimes Android is great because it's so expansive and you can do so much with it. And sometimes it just becomes a confusing mess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is I think that true. would work, though. I'm pretty sure that does work because uh, I, I was looking at my phone while the camera was not on me. And... Uh, I opened up one of my messaging applications and when you set the notification tone, you can set it to a custom notification tone or you can set it to the default ringtone. Oh, so I assume okay. if you set the default ringtone to silent or off, then it just wouldn't make any noises at all. And then you can set it individually if you want to or just leave it as is and yeah. it won't make any sounds. Uh, okay. Because the idea was that if you had them all set, all of your really unimportant things set to none... Uh, you know, as the default, but you had your phone set to play the sound and vibrate, then those would still vibrate, even though they were playing the sound file, which is nothing. And then the ones you really want to poke through, like a ring doorbell, would actually make a noise. And, you know, then he's not being called to every single flipping, you know, notification that comes through. It's just this small bucket of apps actually makes a sound so that I know it's really important. And that sounds, yeah, what you're describing there, Joe, sounds like uh, that would work. So, um, Cool. I hope that works. Thank you, Craig, for sending that in. Ron, you got the email. Or sorry, not the email. You've got the uh, app. Yeah. Ooh, you, you shook me up there. All right. Sorry. So uh, <laughs> we're going to take a break and hear from our first sponsor, Captera. Um, and listen, finding software is complicated, but it doesn't have to be. Captera puts thousands of real software reviews at your fingertips. They are the leading free online resource to help you find the best software solution for your business. Captera has over 925,000 reviews of products with, uh, with 30,000 fresh reviews available each month. You can discover everything you need to make an informed decision. Search more than 700 specific categories of software like CRM, IT project management, e-commerce, link management tools, web conferencing, just to name a few. There's so many to choose from. And once you choose a category, you can filter the search results by product rating, users, deployment, and features. Then you can compare them side by side up to four at a time. They'll even show you a list of related categories for further options. And listen, if you're if you're in, in a small business or a big business, making a software decision is one of the key things you'll do, and you want to be informed when you do it. You don't the the worst thing you want to do is pick a uh, software package that you and your your team start using, and it turns out to be the wrong one, and then you've got to back out of it and launch. Uh, uh, you know, get ready with a new one. It's just a mess. You want to be informed when you make that decision. I know every time I'm looking to use, whether it's an ad server or uh, some, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, backend web tools or things like that. I always want to look to see what are people using and what do they succeed with. And Captera is the place where I can find that with. Um, it's so easy to search and compare and make an informed decision. So no matter what kind of software your business needs, Captera makes it easy to discover the right solution fast. And once you find that perfect software, remember to leave a review and share your knowledge with other buyers because knowledge is power. Pay it forward. Pass it along. Be part of the community. It's a good thing. So check out Captera's free website, 
Visit Captera.com slash AAA and join the millions of people who've used Captera to find the right tools for their business. That's Captera.com slash AAA, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash AAA. Captera, software selection simplified. Thanks, Captera, for sponsoring this episode of All About Android and helping me make informed decisions. Yay, Captera. <laughs> thank you, Captera. And thank you, Ron, for your yay. And yay. now, Kevin, it is time for hardware. Pow. You see, hardware is the more like serene music. Uh, and before yeah. the show, we were guessing the uh, bumper music. Without this is why you got to tune video. in. You got to tune in live on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific to hear the nonsense like us trying to guess the music of our bumpers <laughs> mm-hmm. while we wait. Um, so listen, there's so much going on in the world of Android hardware. You know, you might be upset because Google stopped making tablets or because of the disastrous uh, foldable situation going on over at Samsung and the rest of the world. You want your new cutting edge device and you want a tablet, maybe one that folds. Uh, well, rumors have been swirling that Microsoft, of all people, uh, has been working on a dual nine inch display surface tablet codenamed Centaurus. Uh, it's powered mm. by an Intel Intel processor that will run Windows Core OS, a more lightweight version of Windows. And why is this uh, relevant to you? Because it also supports running Android apps. Um, and uh, pr- the as previously mentioned, Huawei uh, is also working on its own OS that would support Android apps. Uh, just as a reminder to you that Huawei is also working on an OS. Mm. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Microsoft with a, with a foldable nine inch uh, tablet. That's pretty interesting. Not bad. In I'm case anyone's wondering, Centaurus is a bright constellation in the southern sky. I just hmm. wanted so, to. So now what can we what can you ascertain from that? A bright constellation in the southern sky, mm, a foldable yeah. nine inch tablet, it folds south. Why why call it Centaurus? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we're reading into this at exactly the right the right depth. Oh no, we should I, I mean <laughs> there's a table of people who came up with this name to try For and a reason. Like, think about Marketing. I don't know when it's a code name. Sometimes I just feel like they go, I don't know, just a, yeah, that name, sure, why not? But is it's Android the South? Like, is Android the operating system the South? And this is like the bright constellation. Like, is this some sort of like call out to the Microsoft fans <laughs> who are sad that Windows yeah. Phone didn't like live on? I mean, I'm just yeah, I, th- I think it might actually be that. Um, what do you think, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> I I have no idea <laughs> you don't have I know any it's like I know it's technically you're not supposed to say that right but I have no idea what no, this means no believe me we have no idea about a lot of things that we talk about on this show it's okay welcome home so so Joe, so Joe what's your take on the whole foldable device world yeah. do you want a fold do you even want a foldable tablet that runs Windows and Android oh definitely definitely I'm <laughs> a huge fan of the foldable market uh but nice. not because of its durability obviously but it's it's one of those things, right? It's, it's one of those brand new kind of technologies and one that runs Windows and Android apps. That's basically right up my alley. I, I feel like Microsoft made this device for me. I would, maybe they did. Maybe yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so if you can be patient, if you can be patient until 2020, it could be yours. Oh, I'm truly excited for 2020, and I think that's when the foldables <laughs> market's really going to start taking off and having some fun with it. We're going to get past the Galaxy. The disaster that's going to be the Galaxy Fold and then whatever Huawei is doing. But then 2020 is going to come along and I think we're going to have a lot more fun stuff like this. I'm a big fan of fun hardware. You and you and Ron should go bowling because the two of you are are big fans of, of uh, odd kind of the, the the stranger stuff that's happening in the, in the hardware. And, and really the best place to talk about strange Android hardware is the bowling alley. Yes, absolutely. That's what you do. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. That's what everybody does that are fans of strange <laughs> Android hardware. They go bowling together. Uh, and Android bowling. Strange. Well, we, it turns <laughs> out I'm also a huge fan of bowling. I'm just very terrible at it. Oh, there you go. Oh, man, I'm so bad at bowling. Uh, for one game, usually it's one game out of like three or four that I do okay. And that, that one game makes me think I've got it figured out and it's all over. Uh, you know what you won't want to talk about when you go bowling? Uh, the Walmart on 10.1 inch tablet. Oh my! So I did a full review of this tablet on Hands On Tech. Uh, if you go to twit.tv/slash hot, 
you can find that full review. But I thought I'd bring it on here just to kind of show it off a little bit. We had talked about, uh, oh, well, let me let me go ahead and put my password in over here. <laughs> Wrong one. So jo uh, we should, while, while you're doing that, we should yeah. fill in the viewers and Joe. Uh, we discovered that Walmart sold a tablet, which yes. we thought was fascinating. And it was a very low cost very tablet cheap. at, at what, 70 bucks, like 60 bucks or so. Yeah, 80 yep. bucks. And, and so we we immediately dispatched Jason to go buy it and use it. <sighs> yes, and so I opted. So there's an eight inch version for sixty four dollars, and then there's a ten point one inch version for seventy nine dollars. Only four left, by the way, in the, in the Walmart store. In the world, in, the in all the world. <laughs> <laughs> and and I will say that when I walked into the store to buy one, I can't remember if I told this story on the show or if it was pre show, but I'll tell it really quick. I walked in the store to buy one. And I knew that, you know, it said on the site there was one left at my store, my Walmart. And I went to the the hardware area, which, you know, kind in some ways kind of looked like a nuclear bomb had been set off. It was just like things were all over the place and everything. But I definitely found that it took me a while to, like, be certain that I found the tablet section. That's how out of place everything was. I was like, okay, no, this is the tablet section. This is the little area where I think the tablets would be, but there are no tablets here. But I know that there's at least a couple in stock. So I ended up like looking around, scratching my head, finally talking to someone and being like, do you guys sell a tablet on brand that you make or whatever? They're like, no, we don't do, we don't sell one of those. I was like, are you sure? Because I went on site and said, you have one in stock. And they're like, oh, one second, open up the, the like cupboard. And it was like stashed away in a locked cupboard. So if they want to sell these, they need to do better as far as that's concerned because they didn't even have them out for sale, yet they were selling them. They didn't even know that they existed until I reminded them. Anyways, this is the on 10.1-inch tablet, $79 for this uh, this large format tablet. And I would say the the biggest plus here and the thing that's going to make you know most fans of this show excited about it would be the fact that it's running Android 9 Pi and it's a very, very slightly modified version of Android Pi. Honestly, everything looks stock. If you go into your settings, everything looks, oh boy, I've got some brightness going on right now. Let me ramp that down a little bit. Everything looks pretty close to stock, uh, the app drawer and everything. Uh, the only way that it's not was that elusive uh, Walmart button, which when you tap it, takes you to Walmart's suite of apps. Uh, all that kind Why of stuff. Why is it 9 p.m., by the way? <laughs> I never I never changed the time zone. Oh. <laughs> and apparently it didn't change it automatically for me I was me thinking either. maybe it, it traveled us, it like took us through time. Like yeah. it's actually a, this really <laughs> deep, intense tablet. It's hiding a secret. Yes, this review has taken me three hours, Flo. <laughs> it's now three hours later. <laughs> I'm sorry. It takes me a long time to review my devices. Uh, so the plus is it's running Android 9 Pi. And it's cheap, right? Sixty-four to seventy-nine dollars. I mean, that's that's in kind of the price category where you could be like, oh, okay, I've got very little to lose here. Uh, then, you know, in my time spent with this device, I'd say the downsize. Um, for the most part, it's pretty slow, right? Like things drag a lot if I'm if I'm browsing the web or whatever. Things are kind of choppy and jittery as I'm as I'm scrolling around. It's not it's not like unusable, but don't expect to be flying around. Uh, doing stuff or, or multitasking, whatever. But you know, you can browse with it. You can read with it. Uh, you know, read read your eBooks. Uh, watch watch video on it. That's gonna work fine. You're not gonna get like pristine, high quality HD video because the display just isn't. Um, I think it's a 720p display, and at 10.1 inches. Like you see a lot of pixels when you really get up close to it. Um, battery drains super quickly. This <laughs> this has a 3,500 milliamp hour battery, and most phones have more, more than that, I would say, these days. More, most of the kind of mid to higher end phones do. Um, so you're driving this gigantic screen with a small battery. And I mean, you'll do, you'll like start on a certain thing, like, oh, I got to do this thing. And 10 minutes later, look down and 10% of the battery's gone. So uh, not a whole lot of battery um, performance on here. It has a plastic display, it scratches pretty easily. It also kind of feels a little stiff. Like sticky is the wrong word, but it kind of has that resistive screen feeling to it. Uh, even though it's not resistive, it is capacitive. But anyways, it does ship with a screen protector that fits it. But um, 
you know, stupid me, I took the screen protector off because that's what I always do when I get a new phone that has a screen protector. <laughs> and you can't like buy the screen protectors again. So if you get one, leave the screen protector on. It it makes the screen feel kind of tacky and and weird. But it's going to protect the the plastic on the screen. It doesn't have an oleophobic uh, coating on it, so it's not going to repel scratches very easily. Uh, and the speakers and the cameras are just awful. Like the camera, the front-facing camera is a – where is the camera? It's a, a 0.3 megapixel uh, camera. The rear-facing, I think, is two, uh, <laughs> 2 megapixels here. I'll just switch to the front so we can get the beautiful money shot. I mean, just just look at that. It just, it, it tracks so well. Um, so you know, why are you buying this tablet? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Am I buying it because I expect a lot out of it? If that's your if that's what you're buying it for, then you probably shouldn't. Uh, but if you're buying it because seventy nine dollars or sixty four dollars is really not a whole lot of money to have another screen device that you can kind of take on vacation and get maybe a movie and a half out of, uh, great, go for it. You know, um, or, 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 I mean, also, but if you're looking for a low cost, you know, like if you shop at Walmart and you don't mind on uh, products from Walmart, I mean, I could I, I, I understand why it's there and who the person is that buys this. Someone who's not an Android enthusiast like us, who knows everything, who remembers the Nexus tablets are just like, oh, I would love an iPad, but I can't afford one. Here's the $60 one at Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's uh, let's be honest. That's really what's happening here. Yep. And kids. Yeah. Yeah, and kids. kids wanting to get their yeah parents wanting to get their kids a super cheap, basically disposable tablet that you know if the kids scratch it up or throw it away or drop it in some sort of water, the parents don't get overly angry that they wrecked this Walmart on ten point one inch tablet instead of the family iPad. You know, absolutely, and and you know what, and that's probably the best case to be made for it, right? If you have young kids, and, I'm, and I I say that because if they're older, they're probably playing more games. And this doesn't do well with games beyond kind of the really basic games. If there's a whole lot of moving pieces, things stutter and slow down like you wouldn't believe. So this is not like high-end or even mid-range gaming performance. This is not meant to be a gaming tablet. But if they're younger and you want a tablet for your kid that you can put a case on, Walmart sells a kid, like a rubberized kid case with a handle for this tablet specifically for like 10 bucks. So you get the the eight inch with that. It has the screen protector on the front. So it's all kind of together and you don't have to worry about your kid peeling off the screen protector. For like 80 bucks all in, you got a device that, you know, you're, you're four to seven year old, I, I would say, or who knows? You decide. But you know they can watch their 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 content on YouTube and Netflix and and whatever, and it's going to do great for them. You know, and, and it'll sorry. Yeah, it'll also teach them the uh, the lifelong lesson of having to plug in your electronics every day. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a really good point. Well, honestly, every few hours, like you know, <laughs> their viewing time will be capped out at the amount of time that the battery lasts. So you know, you don't have to worry about over screening them. Perfect. So there you go. So that's the Walmart on 10.1 inch tablet. Uh, I think the, the same review would go for the eight inch. Uh, it's just a little bit smaller and everything, but, but yeah, there you go on. You know, it's good when it's on. Yes. That's, that's <laughs> I'm just writing truth. marketing for slogans now for Walmart. There you go. <laughs> you, you know, it's good when it actually turns on. On. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. All right, Flo, you're next. Um, so other brands that we're talking about here that aren't, well, maybe someday they'll be offered through Walmart. So Xiaomi has announced a new series of smartphones called the Mi CC. So CC stands for camera and camera, like dual cameras, <laughs> haha. But also the Cs stand for chic, cool, colorful, and creative. All of the terminology that you would associate with the hot, cool millennials of today and Gen Z. Oh Sorry, my. there's Gen Z now. I'm no longer the youngest generation. So this is aimed at global young generations with trendy design <laughs> and camera features. Cool. Oh. It's created by the youngest product teams at Xiaomi with half of them being art majors. Okay. <laughs> uh, by the way, good for art majors. Uh, <laughs> this is the result of Xiaomi's acquisition of Me Too, um, oh, Me Too. spelled M-E-I-T-U. Uh, it was a selfie maker app. You may have seen their apps around in the Play Store. So there's no word yet on what the devices will actually look like or when they will be unveiled, but there's a plan. So 
this it'll be interesting to see how this takes off though globally because I'd be curious to see if you could push forth a phone just based solely on the taking of selfies. I mean, I really want to see where we're at in the world right now, like with regards to this. It's it's a phone for the youths. Well, I'm curious if it could work, actually. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I wish we could had like had a phone to look at. Let's see what these art majors came up with. <clears throat> Put their major <laughs> to use. Um I I feel like though when we venture down the road of like hardware created specifically for a category of people, it doesn't always go the way the way it was intended. Like there Yes, was- but this is the Chinese market. We're t- well, this is a global market we're talking about here, which which is why I'm like, let's wait and see, because I'm really curious to see how this would like if Xiaomi yeah. was a phone marketed towards Android enthusiasts or towards people who wanted a different kind of Android, like I wonder how they would market this and if it could work. That's what I'm really curious about. Yeah, I'm I'm very curious about that too. I think once once we get one of these phones, because you know we totally get Xiaomi phones all the time for this show. One of these days we will. Um, Mateo, Mateo is, will get it. That's true. Mateo would probably get this. Uh, if we happen to get one, it's going to Uflow. You flow. You got to be the right. one to take it for a spin if you want to. I guess you don't. Since have to. since I'm the the se- the second clo- <laughs> I'm the closest to the current generation. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Closer than I am, for sure. Um, also, millennials. <laughs> wait, what did that say? <laughs> Whoa! They want a pair of teeth. <laughs> millennials don't want to get drunk. What do they want? Aperitifs. And two cameras. <laughs> oh, <this is> aperitif. <laughs> oh, oh, the internet. Yeah, fun times. All right. All right, Ron. Well, speaking of cameras, <laughs> the uh, Google Pixel 4, the, 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 the rumored and leaked and then confirmed Google Pixel 4 by Google, might have a long-awaited new feature, P3 color gamut support. Hold the phone, everyone. Gamut support. Uh, But this is a big deal for camera enthusiasts. Uh, Android devices have historically captured a limited color range images using the sRGB gamut. Images that show colors outside the sRGB range will clip those colors to the nearest color. The P3 gamut is a wider color gamut by comparison. Apple uh, has supported the P3 gamut for three years now. And last month, Google said wide color photos would soon hit Android. Now, code has been discovered in the Google Camera app that hints at possible support for wide gamut P3 color capture. Uh, And the fine folks at XDA believe that P3 support will be present in the Pixel 4. And that seems, given the the square camera design of the Pixel 4 that we saw when Google posted it, if they're going to focus on high-end again, flagship phone, and camera functionality, where else to go but improving the color depth and the uh, the color values, that seems like a logical spot to go. Um, Joe, what what do you take on this? Do you think that this is inevitable for the P4 or will we get it sooner in the Google camera app? I think it'll come with the Google camera app. Um, I was a little mesmerized by the the fence with the rose because that looked like my fence in one of my rose bushes. I was like, did they get that photo <laughs> from me? This was no, taken two minutes ago. The outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, hold on a second. I know that fence, uh, but I guess all wood fences look like that. Uh, in any case, uh, I, I'm not the biggest camera buff, so I might be the wrong person to ask about this kind of stuff. But I, it feels just like the natural progression uh, coming forward. I, I wonder, if, like, does the lens have to support it or is this a post-processing kind of thing? And if it's in the Google camera app, then I'm guessing it's a post-processing thing rather than something that the lens has to actually capture. That's a really good question um, because if it's in the app and not in the lens, then potentially that means it could be backported to other you know, devices like the Pixel 3. I have 3. a feeling it's in the app knowing I have a feeling this is some sort of AI magic that is making this happen and processing be- power. Right? Yeah, that's what I think yeah. too. I think it's going to be some sort of processing trick that Google does. I mean, you can get the Night Sights Google camera app on a bunch of phones that aren't Google phones. Yeah. So it wouldn't shock me if this was very similar. Yeah. If you, I don't know if you still have it up, Kevin, um, the, uh, the little animation of the rows going back and forth. Um, it's subtle, but what, what you want to like train your eyes on is that is the red of that center mm-hmm. rose. And you can see like that like uh, right now is a little bit washed out. That's a little bit deeper. You know what I mean? The pinks and, get pinker too. 
in the second in the P3 version. Yeah, you just get more. Well, you just get more depth. There's more kind of different differentiation of the colors in the the P3 profile versus yeah. the sRGB, where it almost looks like it clips in the reds. Uh, a little bit with the sRGB. Well, so. it's like it's like ra it's like rounding numbers. It's yeah. rounding the color to the nearest value, right? right? Which is not the uh -huh. actual color. So right. you know, right? And doesn't right. represent what we actually see with our eyes. So yeah. along the way, that's what these color gamut you know profiles are all about: getting further and further to the point where it represents all of the true colors that we see, instead of having to round those up. So, so any improvements better than not? I see your true colors shining through. <laughs> Man, so I, I wouldn't peg you for for a True Colors uh, song. Hey, I'm a big I'm a big Cindy Lauper fan. Uh, yeah, okay. I could yes, I could peg. I'm for all that. for it. <laughs> so all I'm right. curious, like, is maybe this is too deep of a question for all that? Oh, here we go. Episode here we go. Four twenty six. But I'm wondering. So are, is what we're seeing like? It's so hard to tell if the camera knows what my eye doesn't. If that makes sense. Um, like if the smartphone camera is truly reproducing what my eye sees, I don't know. Are you asking? This is a deep question. Yeah, this, this might be an existential <laughs> well, question this because is a deep this ties into a question that I've always had, which is Amazing what if, transition, by the way, what if, what if my red and my whole color profile of what everything looks normal, like my reds and my greens and everything yeah. is actually your purple and your blue, but yeah, what you've if always known that properly. to be true. And I've always known this to be yep. true. And so it just looks normal to you. But if I was to put my eyes inside your head, or whatever we could we could trade sight. We'd be like, whoa! Why does your grass this look like the sky? Question. I thought about so this when I was like ten. Just like smartphones, we just have parts that you take in and out of us. Yeah. This seems, this seems like a college dorm Dude. late night, you know, oh, yeah. kind of like whoa. Yeah. How is Sorry, my blue? Your blue. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, oh, well. what's yep. what's what's your color gamut like, man? <laughs> I don't know. See, what I'm wondering is if we try to go so realistic that you know, because you know, some people have the eye floaties. You can see it like you know, floating through your vision. Whoops, sorry about that. But like floating through your vision. And I'm wondering if someday someone's going to get too meta with it and be like, so realistic, we included the eye floaties. <laughs> so just to, and if you stare into the light, you can see the veins behind your eyeballs. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, just to offer a quick tidbit, um, SRGB, as far as I remember from the days I worked in print, because yeah. there used to be print magazines. Yeah. That's not the one they use. They use the other palette, the CMYK, the big, the, in print. the expansive one. They use that for printing. Oh, okay. Because it's more vivid and vibrant, like for magazines. Oh. Just in case anybody's curious. What kind of screen would you need to view that kind of color gamut, though? Because, I, you know, I bought a laptop last year for a An thousand Apple bucks. Display. And I, yeah, I looked it up and yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, it covers like 76% of the sRGB range. And I'm like, I can't even see all the, like, all the computer colors. How am I supposed to see all the normal colors with like all this <laughs> new technology that Google's including, you know? Yeah. Well, I think Flo, I think you nailed it. We have to buy one of Apple's uh, multiple thousand dollar displays. That's all we have to do. All right. right. Yeah. I don't have to buy the stand too, do I? Yeah. Oh, uh, you gotta. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. You do. <laughs> if, if you want to see those colors, you have to buy the stand. Okay. Yet another great deal from Apple. <laughs> Fine folks at Cupertino. <laughs> all right. Let's take a break and then we'll get into some apps. And uh, and a whole lot more. We got the arena after that. So, but before we get there, this episode of All About Android is brought to you by LegalZoom. Uh, I've been le using LegalZoom for years. I got my last will and testament uh, done through them when we had our first daughter. Um, uh, more more than nine years now. Uh, you've been hearing us talk the last few weeks. Uh, about the friends and family discount that's happening at LegalZoom. If you haven't already, you should visit LegalZoom.com and take advantage of the special discount before it's too late. Uh, small business owners, you can make your accountant happy by saving on your LLC, DBA, S-Corp, and more. Uh, you can also save money wrapping up your last will or your living trust and secure that peace of mind knowing your family is going to be covered. It really does. It's, it's crazy. It kind of sucks like going through the process of doing this because you're actually facing your own mortality and everything. But then when you get on the other side, you feel like, ah, it was worth the work because now I know, uh, and now that I know that we're covered, everything just feels a little bit lighter. 
If legal questions arise, don't worry. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but their nationwide network of independent attorneys can provide advice for your business, your estate plan, and so much more. They're there to uh, help you with any questions that you might have. Don't wait another minute putting off the things you need to get done. Stop doing that. Visit LegalZoom.com now and save 10% with LegalZoom's friend and family discount. Be sure to enter code AAA in the referral box at checkout. That lets them know that you um, that you are a fan of All About Android, and that'll get you the 10% uh, discount. This offer will not be available for very much longer, so hurry to LegalZoom.com now. Use code AAA, and you'll get 10% off, and let them know that you got the code from All About Android. LegalZoom, where life meets legal. And we appreciate LegalZoom for their support of All About Android. All right. So now it's the it's Joe's favorite segment. Yes. He's been waiting his entire life. The for, whole show for this. He's been waiting an hour patiently. Apps in All About Android. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that bumper. Isn't that great? He's like, guys, you're, you're talking it up just a little too much. I actually don't like apps. <laughs> I love the old blogger logo in the in the bumper, by the oh, way. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Piece by piece, oh, that is there bumper inbox? is disintegrating. Ooh, that's, that's inbox <laughs> underneath the twit logo, right? Leave it. Leave it. A, <laughs> yeah, ingress. A rest in peace of sorts. Yeah. yeah. It's like a it's like a graveyard now. If we backed Aww. it up, I'm sure we'd saw so, see other dead ones too. Oh, I'm sure. Aww. What are, what are the binoculars back there? Is that look? Look. That's right? Look. Yeah, wasn't there a Google Look app or something like that? Or yeah, Google Look. <laughs> yeah, this show is full of tangents. Uh, lens? No, that wouldn't be lens. Lens is the new thing. Did I make yeah. up Google goggles. Look? Did is I it goggles? No. Google <laughs> goggles logo. Let me see. <laughs> and no, I, I because think I made up Google Look because the Google goggles logo. <laughs> Oh. Google goggles. Uh, Google goggles <laughs> logo was like a 3D glasses, if you remember. Yes, it was blue, it was like and, blue red and red and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you remember, seven years ago, lots of Google goggles jokes, Jason. <laughs> yes, before Huawei Google. came along. Google goggle Huawei. Yeah. Um, it All sounds right. like something out of a Harry Potter novel. It really does. Uh, funny you should mention that because apparently there's this game that uh, that. People are going nuts over Niantic Labs, which also had a logo in the uh, the drop for the app segment, uh, released its eagerly awaited game, Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Uh, basically, I, I'm sure some people would get like offended for some weird reason for me saying it's the next Pokemon Go, but that's basically what it is, right? It's basically just Pokemon Go with 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 wizard stuff, right? Yeah, I, yeah. It's although, just like it's instead of instead of red and white balls, it's it's magic wands. So I have it on <laughs> running on my phone here. I uh, saw someone online that said it's basically the same map as Pokemon Go. Ooh, I got new Cause spleen. Because it's, it's what it's what's around you, right? And all the locate the the bases are all the same, right? Yeah. Uh, well, yep. I don't know. Is it uh, Joe? You are the expert. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I. I uh, I've only taken this out for a drive. I haven't played too much of the game, but all of the same stops that were in Ingress and Pokemon Go are also in this one. I'm pretty sure they use the same map for all three games. Uh, I, the thing that cracked me up is they call the things that you're supposed to find the the, the foundables. Yes. Like the word found <laughs> with bubbles at the end. I was like, wow, that is adorable. I love that. Foundables. So this is going to be really hard for me to show off because I have a fixed camera and my AR thing is all the way up there. So my apologies. I'm trying to, it's moving around. I'm trying to tap. Okay. And then it's going to say, okay, low threat level. And now I'm going to go, and then I'm going to go poof, poof. There we go. Augmenti, menti. And then this guy's going to go. Do you have to say augmenti? Cause it's like AR. Is that like the Harry Potter <laughs> augmented reality? Thing. Maybe, maybe <laughs> what they need to do though is they need to activate the microphone so that like you say it properly. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Like, why didn't they do that? Probably privacy. Uh, anyways, yeah. So it's kind of the same same general style AR overlay of a virtual map on real world locales, um, and there's you know a whole lot of other things like the foundables, um, and all sorts of other things, but. Um, 
Yeah, and I'm probably not going to play it very much. My well, Flo, Flo is Flo is is curiously silent in all this. Yeah, Flo, Flo are, are you are you are you excited for this? Or? I've not. I don't. I've never read any of the books. I have nothing to add here. Like I know nothing about this. <laughs> I thought Sorry. I was going to be the. I thought I was going to be the the grumpy naysayer about tell. Harry Potter. Turns out it was Flo. No, I'm not a naysayer. <laughs> I just I I literally have nothing to contribute. Like I just. It's I you know I hope they make use of it at the new Universal Studios ride that I keep hearing commercials for. Are you excited about that ride at least? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have a, if you don't have a connection to the to the property then this isn't the meaningless. I, I, yeah, I have no like. connection to HP the way that I do like Pokemon is like emotional well, for me. Well, hold on. If it was an HP AR app and it was about Hewlett Packard, I'd be all over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that Niantic's working on that for the next release. Uh, yeah, you get to use. You the can like Packard you can virtually CD. change the toner in the printer, load the paper. <laughs> oh, that sounds that sounds yeah, amazing. That sounds uh, every Office Max is a stop that you can refill <laughs> on your printer ink. <laughs> I need a I like this paper. game a lot better than Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, we, and that means we are old. <laughs> yeah. um, I heard, I did hear that this game, or as I was reading on Twitter, um, people were talking about their experience with it, that this game feels a lot um, more inclusive of adults or older players than maybe Pokemon Go does. That's what I heard. How? How? I, well, I don't know. You know, but, context you know, it, would help, I'm sure. But it seems a little know. bit. It seems like there's a little bit more depth. I would say. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe in that sense. Yeah, there's there's more items to interact with. I felt I felt like in my limited time with Pokemon Go, it was really just go out there and find find oh, them I and heard collect them. Like you could do crafting or something. Like you could make potions right. or something like that. Right. So there's like a a bit of an RPG element to it in that sense. Yep. And I think that um, Ratcliffe uh, offered his voice to the game. So if okay. you enjoy listening to the dulcet tones of of um, of him, then you will enjoy it. So before we go to the next story, uh, Web4853 in the chat room, let us know that the binoculars icon in the bumper was the Google um, old field tri uh, Google field trip app. Field trip. Remember that? Oh, that's a name yeah. I've heard in forever. No kidding. Yeah. Wow, yep. good, good, good catch, Web forty eight fifty three. Yep. So good uh, job. I'm happy we figured that one out, and I'm happy that it was field trip because what the heck? So field trip became something. Field trip roped into something, and then went away that entirely. Yeah. Man, we've been doing this for so long. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to keep it all straight. Uh, while you look that up, Flo, you've got the next one. Oh, field trip I was do developed by Niantic too. It was, oh, Next that's one. right. It was. It was Niantic. Oh, oh wait! Look, it, all remember the it all ties back to uh, to uh, the story. It really <laughs> does in a strange way. What were you going to say, Joe? I was going to say I remember Field Trip. Uh, you could read about uh, places of interest and stuff like yes. that in the app, and uh, I silently theorized that that's how they came up with uh, the the stops in Ingress, which would become the stops in Pokemon Go, and are yeah. the stops now. Oh, okay. Because those are the points. Because they're always points of interest, right? Like unless yep. it's a business that paid for it, or like a point of interest or something like that, you you can't just put a stop anywhere. Right. Right. Yeah. You're probably you're probably right. I wonder if that came before. No, Ingress was before, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't. Know. I keep yeah. asking questions, and then <laughs> then we keep Sorry, getting right. sent down <laughs> the 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 uh, the hole. Um, all right, flow for reals this time. It's yours. Okay, for reals. So I've never used Telegram, but I know that there are a lot of folks out there who do. So you might be excited to hear they're working to make their messaging app even more secure than it is already. So Telegram now allows for add people nearby. No phone number exchange is needed. All you do is you basically add folks by proximity. Telegram also, now lets users control who sees their phone number, so you don't have to blast it out to the world if you don't want to. And you can also set up a local group, kind of like a chat, uh, but in your specific location, like if you're at a festival or maybe you're at a game or maybe you're on campus somewhere. So the idea is just to connect people more, I guess, phone to phone versus over the air. Yeah, I like that. 
because people are always looking for a way, well, especially like, you know, for an app that is all about privacy, having to, having to reveal your phone number might not, you know, be something that everybody really wants to have to do. So that's a really good way to kind of get I mean, everything's that. already tied to your phone number in this day and age. Like it's true. It's, I'm, I'm, Remember when phone numbers were supposed to be a best kept secret and now they're like social security numbers. <laughs> they identify you mm -hmm. every which way. So true. Um, breaking news, but you don't have to play the bumper. It's cool. Uh, Bleak oh. says, well, oh. I mean, unless you actually have it. Kevin, can you play the bumper? <laughs> This, this is why. No, he doesn't know where it is. No, don't all worry right, about fine. it, Kevin. It's all good. It's all good. Instead, Flo is going to sing a breaking news song. Flo, go. It's breaking news. It's breaking news. It's going to break. <laughs> no one's back. I, I want I want there, we, <laughs> there we go. I forgot that was the song. This is, this is a fun episode. I like it. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have breaking news from the chat room. Uh, it is official. Field trip was first, September 2012. Oh, that's what, yeah, field trip. That's what it was called. Ingress came out in December 2013. Oh, wow. So you're, yeah, yeah you're probably spot on. I, and I vaguely remember that, Joe, that, that certain data points from field trip were integrated into Ingress. So, Hey, Jason, yeah. I, I don't want to be too much of a, a naysayer here, but I feel like that was a, a little bit of abuse of breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> I've, part of me just wanted I feel to see like that, I feel like that was neither news nor breaking <laughs> well it was it just happened in the chat room <laughs> I needed right. practice it was it was abuse of power and I apologize it was a little bit I wanted to see if Kevin could do it the one time Jason ever abuses his power <laughs> it's the breaking happen. news bumper you you got me uh, Ron you got the next story though I do have the next story, and anytime Google does anything with YouTube uh, um, or anything like that, it's always worth noting, um, especially with the comments, because you know YouTube comments are fun. It's a great place to be. Um, so Google's testing hiding them by default in the YouTube for Android app. Uh, usually comments appear below the up next portion. They're now hidden with looking for comments. Click here. And clicking that points out that the comments are now moving up into the button row next to thumbs up, thumbs down, share, and download. And so uh, I don't know if they're trying to hide comments or downplay comments in the mobile experience or give way for other functionality. But either way, they're deprioritizing comments in the uh, in the app or maybe just you know kind of seeding them to their own little area. So if you don't care about them, you won't see them. Um, but I thought they were already pretty hidden. Like I've numerous times I've scrolled all the way down trying to find comments. Um, so I'm sure there's some logic behind this, but who knows? Yeah. YouTube commenters are fun. Yeah. They're so much fun. Yeah. It's such a joyous wonderland. It is my favorite part of YouTube <laughs> bar none <laughs> period. The best part. It's so fun being YouTube. a woman on the internet. Oh, uh -oh. Uh, you win. <laughs> you win. Oh, wow, wow. oh yes okay so fine remember i can't tweet what i actually want because people will come after me yeah um well i hope i hope that uh that they do kind of hide them a little bit more because yeah it can be kind of depressing but yet at the same time i rely on them because it's like the, to a certain degree for some of our shows it's the only way that i can see like they're like a, tabloids i know it's like i have to see because if there's like it. an issue or yeah. if some you know someone really likes something or if someone really didn't like something that ends up being the only place other than email um but there's more comments than email i would say um, and finally, this isn't really a news story. I just thought it was kind of amusing. The Verge's Dan Seifert tweeted a fun factoid. He said, every single Google app for Android that has a dark mode puts the setting to turn it on in a different place. How is this a single company? <laughs> and it's true. I just feel like that's, that summarizes so much about, about Google where they have these big efforts and it really seems like, like, Putting a dark mode setting in a, the same place in a lot of apps, maybe that just sounds like it, it should be easy, but it's actually not. But definitely the proof is in the pudding. Different you groups? Go into all these different places, these different apps, and you're going to find the setting. Some of them are going to be in the settings. Some of them are going to be in the hamburger menu. Some of them are going to be buried over here. It's just like you never really know exactly where you're looking. And 
I don't know. Part of me feels like it should be unified. I've said it before. I don't understand how the the Google News app magically knows to put it automatically into dark mode. And yet in the Messages app, I have to go into the menu and choose dark mode. Like if you can do it in one app automatically, do it in all of them automatically. I wish you could ask the Google Assistant to just like go into dark mode, please. Activate dark mode. There we go. Oh. What what Perfect. was the Thank what Kevin. was the hot word You're for Kevin? Really... Wow. <laughs> I don't know what the hot wow. word was for well, you, Kevin. I did it this morning on iOS today. Oh, so you've had practice. <laughs> it's a dark mode day for Kevin. <laughs> oh, but see, the only reason he had practice is because Apple finally decided to put dark mode on their apps yeah. and their Good operating point. system. So once again, Android does not get the credit that it deserves yeah. for laying out the foundation. Yes. Hail. I had to learn something new today. Hail flow. Uh, <laughs> before we move on, Joe, dark mode, love it, hate it. How do you feel? I'm a big fan of dark mode. What I want more than anything is for the Google apps to respond to it in the settings, like the actual phone settings. So that way when you change it into dark mode in the settings, the apps kind of just Follow go with suit. it. Because uh, it reminds me a lot of uh, at least Samsung. I don't know if LG's apps do this too, but like Samsung themes, when you install a theme on a Samsung phone, it automatically works in the phone app and the stock messages app and Samsung's email app and whatever other Samsung apps are on the phone. Yeah. I don't know why Google doesn't do that because that automatic the automatic dark mode thing seems like something very googly to me. Mm-hmm. Yes. You could like, use AI for that. Exactly. Yeah. Use AI for it. You know, the sensor senses that it's eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. The sun's going down. Rip. Everything's in dark mode and it's perfect. I, why do, you know what? That is absolutely right, Joe. Why doesn't it go dark at night? Why am I still having white backgrounds to keep me up at night? This is just, I totally agree. What's ridiculous is some apps actually do that. You can set it to, you know, yes. do it at sunrise or sunsets, do it with the sensor. Like, oh, all right, it's dark now. My Android Auto, we were talking about Android Auto earlier. Um, when I go under a bridge, my Android yes. Auto turns into dark mode, and then I come out from under the bridge, and it goes back into white mode. Right. Why can't my phone do what my you know stupid car does? Yeah. My phone uh, is smarter than my car. I hope your car doesn't listen to this podcast. You just called it stupid. I hope it does. It needs to learn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you could just buy a little dongle to put the Google Assistant in it. It's true. Um, isn't that by, like, Anchor? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, I'm using it. Oh, how is it? Does it work? Depends yeah. on how loud the road is, oh. as people have said. Okay. Okay. I'm curious about that one. Um, Joe, I think that Android Q is going to have that because it has the switch for moving into dark mode already. And I don't know that Google has necessarily specifically said that for sure when you switch that on there will be any settings that will automatically bring its apps into sync in synchronicity with the OS level dark mode but something just tells me like that's the obvious next step right I certainly hope so because it would be really nice to not have to have I mean as hilarious as that tweet was to not have to see those guys it's because nobody has to switch on dark mode anymore it just happens yeah, yeah. naturally there, oh, there's an own. obvious time when you want dark mode, and that's when it's dark. <laughs> it's built into the name. Screen. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't be too difficult. I would be really surprised if Q came out um, and that wasn't one of because you know how Google likes to like now in the in the days of the public betas, they save a few things for that launch, and then you realize there's things embedded in there. I wouldn't be surprised if that's just one of those things at the actual launch. I'm a big fan of Google trolling people with their first beta every year. It's always It always includes something that either everybody wants that they eventually remove or something <laughs> that everybody despises that they eventually remove. Yeah. Every year. Yeah. Like so true. Work. I love it. So true. Uh, let's take a break. Thank the sponsor. And then we will get into the arena where Joe will tear our faces off. Whoa. Uh, but first, <laughs> I just say that because you're the apps guy. I'm sorry to call you the apps guy. You probably hate that. <laughs> This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Behind the Tech, a podcast from Microsoft. You already enjoy listening to podcasts. Here's another one for you to check out. Chief Technology Officer Kevin Scott takes you behind the scenes with tech innovators, pioneers, and into the history of computing. 
Uh, previous episodes, he's talked to Danielle Feinberg, Pixar's computer scientist creating magic through lighting. Uh, Jaron Lanier, uh, many people call him the father of virtual reality. Also, Reed Hoffman, investor, author, entrepreneur, and best known for co-founding LinkedIn. Uh, in the most recent episode, Kevin spoke with Surya Ganguly, an innovator in artificial intelligence uh, from quantum mechanics and string theory to monkey brains and electrophysiology mapping. Surya's take on AI may surprise you. On Behind the Tech, you're going to hear what inspired their guests to author languages, to build the tools that made an impact on the lives of developers and engineers uh, today. And if you're early in your in your career, you're going to learn about the history of the tech industry, but you might also be from Kevin's era. So you might even think as you're hearing these stories, man, I totally remember that uh, being like a nice nostalgia trip for you. Subscribe to Behind the Tech wherever you listen to your podcasts. Uh, it's Google Play Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Libsyn, anywhere you find your podcasts, uh, uh, you're going to find Behind the Tech. Sign up, tune in, and geek out at Behind the Tech. And we thank Microsoft for their support. And now, Kevin, it's time for the arena. Oh. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. Last week, twit.to slash AAA poll 425 is where you went to place your vote for your favorite app. Looking at the results... Hitting the review results button, and I see that Clipboard Manager Pro is the winner. 30, well, basically 37%. Flo, that was yours. Victory. Man, Flo is on a roll. On fire. On fire this year. I'm trying. Good job. Ink it's, Hunter. It's really hard. By yeah, the way. it is. It's uh, very Play Store is full of a lot of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Clipboard Manager Pro, first place at 37%. Ron's Ink Hunter, uh, 30%, second place. Uh, Asphalt, 9, 17, uh, right around 18%. That was Team Guest. And then Letterboxd was mine. People don't like movies, apparently, 16%. It's a cool, it's, Letterboxd is a cool service, Jason. I feel like they deserve more, but... Okay. It came in last, which means that you have, after 24 weeks, mm -hmm. 48 points, which puts you in last wah, place. Wah, wah, wah. I'm in third place, pulling away from you with 52 points. Uh, the guests are still in second with 67 points. And Flo extends her lead in first place to 73 points. Goodness, Quite dramatic. Guys. It's a runaway season this year. Flo is in the driver's seat. Yeah. So that means Jason goes first, then yep. I go, then Joe, then Flo. Uh, sound yeah. Sounds uh, sounds let's make, good. Let's let's make Flo go right now. Oh no, we yeah. can't. Okay, I'll, uh, Jason, you go first. All right, I'll go first. I'll go first. <laughs> and uh, mine's a mine's a music app, and I didn't I didn't pull the the headphone jack, but that's okay. I'm just gonna turn it up really loud, and um, and we'll do this. Mine is called Mubert, um, kind of like Hubert with an M. And basically, what this is, it's generative music. This is artificial intelligence powered music and it's actually a subscription service so you got to be all in on the idea of ai infused music but and most of it is pretty much just uh electronic music so we can go to the genres and you can see right here hold on what's going on here oh do you happen to have this on the oh no it's not gonna work because i don't i don't have never mind you just gave me the, the adapter okay give me one <laughs> second i'm gonna plug this in burke very handily sent me what I need in order to Burke's plug this amazing. in. amazing. Works the really best. Is. All right, so I'm going to plug it in. Plug it in. Plug I like to Moobert, Moobert. I like to Moobert, Moobert. Okay. So now, are we getting the audio through? There we go. All right. Here we are. This is Mubert. Ooh, that is techno. Okay, so this is a artificial intelligence generated music. It is always original. The oh. idea, the idea here, and it's a music service. So, like I said, it's it's kind of weird to think about like a, a pay by month service of music that is always different, that will never be the same, and that you can't replay. Like it's literally just nonstop music with all of these samples. And, uh, and loops and, and everything that uh, actual um, producers have created for the service 
sent to them and then they've they've plugged into their system to kind of categorize the different sounds. It, I just find it kind of interesting. Like, I don't know if it's worth uh, $70 a year to, to pay for this, right? But I, I'm just fascinated by the idea of AI creating art and kind of getting to a point to where, you know, what we think of as a very human effort of creating something that's artistic, that robots could eventually one day do that and have it be indecipherable or at least um, artistic in its own right. And this actually creates music that, I mean, it's it's not bad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's actually, you could you could imagine somebody sitting down at their uh, at their station and, and setting up uh, setting up a, a, a profile in Pro Tools and making something like this. So I'm in the techno um, profile right now. This little slider down here, as you saw, I, I slid it all the way to the left. And that's more of like a lighter approach. You can kind of hear it's like getting ramped up, kind of setting the stage, right? If I go all the way to the right, this sets the intensity to heavy. And this changes how the algorithm, you know, kind of pulls in like the quality of sounds, kind of the beat. It might be a little bit faster. It might be a little bit harder, that sort of stuff. If you like what you're listening to, you can inform it and let it know. Give that a give that a like, and it will, in its own special way, I imagine, kind of analyze what it's playing through, all of the little variables of the samples and all that kind of stuff, to have a better sense of what you actually like. And same goes for for downharding. Um, going in here, I don't know why this is over the top. It wasn't doing that earlier, but you can see behind, like I've got house, I've got techno, chill, hip hop, ambient, electronica, um, Ooh, and hip hop. What's that? Oh, I haven't done hip hop. hop. I, wanna... I could see hip hop falling on its face. Curious what here. AI is gonna do. I am too. <laughs> you turn it up just a slight hair. Oh, okay. Okay. And I mean, it seems so. I kind of like that actually. I know it sounds not bad, right? It's like chill hop, like to write to. Uh, so okay, I like that. You know, plus yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Chill hop, something well, to chill with. Yeah, exactly. And so you go over here to activities, and that's exactly what you find here. Relax, work, study, uh, dream, <laughs> hi, uh, meditate. You know, they know their audience. Yes, well, hey, hey there you go. Uh, meditate, <laughs> if you want some meditative music there. Uh, you've also got random and experimental. Again, I don't know why that's over the top. It wasn't doing that to me earlier. Apparently, every once in a while, they'll give out secret codes that will plug you into, like, specific um, artists and artist collections and stuff like that. I haven't I haven't gotten anything to plug in there, uh, but you can do that at some point. And then any of the favorites that you star, you know, would show there to kind of start your radio station. But uh, I just, I think it's a really interesting uh, idea, really interesting concept. I'm gonna go back into hip hop and get heavy with it, see what happens. Uh, who knows, maybe it'll sound similar. Oh, uh. oh. Uh. It broke itself. <laughs> That's part of the song. Yes. That's the drop. Out. Yes. Is it bad that this sounds like an ICP song to me? I don't know. I think it's bad that you know what an ICP sound so so song sounds like, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's not a lot to do in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I am curious about this as I as I sit here, kind of thumbing through it, like the idea of coming up with music for projects. I wonder what the licensing is on some of this stuff. Yeah, because it's it's all yeah. dynamically created, right? It's all like, dynamically created. It's all original. It's all instrumental. Um, so that's something to investigate. I'm not saying that you could like download this app and then repurpose all this music and and go nuts in your video projects or whatever. A high paid recording artist. Yeah, but I mean, this is an interesting idea, right? And like, I know, I know for myself, sometimes when I'm like meditating, I want you know, sometimes I want a guided meditation. Sometimes I just want nice, mellow, no you know, no complexity yeah. music. And doing the meditate, you can kind of get that kind of get the nice smooth sounds and you know that you don't really have to think about it you just throw that on start your meditation and there you go so anyways so Jason, you you recognize that this is how the robots lull you into uh servitude right yeah like this this is this is a, a skynet tactic yeah <laughs> it's it's okay you know if if the robots are going to kill me at least play some meditative music while you do it you know? <laughs> and you can do that 
with my app called Mubert. And that is it. So it's six ninety nine a month. There is a seven day free trial if you just want to, you know, kind of um, check it out for yourself and see what you think. Uh, and then, or you can pay by the year and save a little bit. Uh, apparently, it's all the rage in Japan. At least that's what they say on their website. Uh, so, anyways, there you go, Mubert. I like to Mubert, Mubert. Ron likes right. to Mubert. <laughs> Sorry, and so now I, the music's got to go away. I will turn it down. Now the music's got to stop. All right, so I know I'm on a, I know I'm on a bit of a kick with this AR stuff, um, but I'm really finding it fascinating, the stuff you can do. Uh, but many of you, maybe many of you in the audience, I don't know the folks here on the panel today, um, but uh, apps like Snapchat and Instagram stories and things like that, you have the ability to put pre-made uh, stickers and GIFs and things like that over your photos. But I wonder if you've ever wondered, you know, I, I th these stickers and, and gifts and stuff like that are cool, but I want to put my stuff on my photos. Well, Doodle Lens lets you do just that. Um, what it does is it allows you to capture a uh, a design or a sticker, then then apply it on top of photos. So what you want to do is you want to um, put it on a white background. You can draw something. What I found best to work is a clear black uh, marker on a white piece of paper, right? And so Jason here is going to draw. He's, what people don't know is Jason is a great artist. Um, it's, a, it's a hidden talent of his. He's a good cartoonist. Um, and here he is drawing someone who looks like a popular uh, animation character. Um, I stopped learning how to draw when I was very young. So right. everybody looks like Bart Simpson. Okay. Okay, so now what you can do is you can, it, uh, in the app, it opens up. It looks very similar to like a Snapchat or something like that. Very simple uh, UI on the on, on the app itself. Um, and if you uh, try to get the whole pe white piece of paper for the whole screen, just so you can kind of capture it that way. All right, if you hit the lower left-hand corner and say copy, hit that. Okay, so now what it does is it picked up that dot. And now if you hit paste. Uh it just put that little thing on your screen and then now as you take pictures it applies it to your lens as you put as you do it with oh okay i'm really happy that sharpie didn't land uh ink yeah. down on my pants because it just fell that's pretty table. good I almost did um okay yeah. so now it will track around it and everything yeah oh, it tracks yeah. where it is based on where you put it with the grid and you can put it there nice. and yeah and that's pretty much how you could put your own stickers onto uh, onto photos. It's pretty cool. And you could either take video or you can take a screenshot, um, and then you can share it and uh, and share it to your social medias. So yeah, Socials. and see now you, by by fi putting your finger on it and dragging it, you can move it around on the lens. Pretty cool, huh? Make it really big. Yep. <laughs> that's a bad picture. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is this is neat if you have your own, if you're an artist or if you have um, uh, pre-made designs or things like that. Here you can see in the video, oh. um, you can add in color uh, um, and other things like that. Um, and they've got these neat kind of like advanced tools that allow you to get rid of the background. So you're making sure you're just grabbing the, uh, the, uh, what you've drawn and you can also animate it. You can drag, you can, um, get several different frames and make a little animated version of it and you can shoot video or take pictures with it. Um, for pictures, you have to take a screenshot, uh, from, uh, as opposed to, uh, taking just a photo, uh, photo, photo. Um, but it's a neat little, uh, neat little app that allows you to bring your own stickers onto your photos and videos. Doodle Lens. It's a dollar ninety nine in the Google Play Store. Support your devs. It's it's done by a young independent developer who has patrons and all this sort of stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, I like it. I think it's neat, and you can be creative with it. Nice. Dollar so. ninety nine. Yeah, and I found the uh, color, the color uh, portion. You when you yeah. let's see here. So you got this interface when you tap. Oh, did I just get rid of it? Anyways, when I had when I had it on there, uh, I would tap the screen and it gave me the little yeah. color option. So. And if you hit the menu button, it brings up some other other options. Um, you can have the AR planes where you can see the do the dot pattern of the AR plane of what you're adding to it. Um, and oh. you see there, you can see how it goes. And also, when you hit menu, you can see the um, the paste that you've saved, so you can go back and use previous ones. Oh, there right? we go. Okay, so yep. now I can show you color. And there yep. We go. That is so cool. cool. Nice. See your true colors. There it is. Awesome. Yeah. That is Doodle Lens. Dollar Pretty ninety nine. Neat. Very neat. I like it. Uh, okay, Joe. I have your game installed. It ate up about a half an hour of my day when I should have been working. Thank you very much. 
surprisingly fun, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I love these games. Uh, I'll show it off while you talk about it. Tell me about it. Okay. Um, the thing is that there was used to be a whole lot of tower defense game releases. Uh, yeah. I remember, you know, Iron Marines was last year. Oh, uh, man. The same developer, yeah, the, the same developer did another one, and I think it's because we're on live, you know, we're doing a live show, but I've, I've just space cased on the name of it. Uh, but it, it hasn't, it's not as popular as it used to be, but Bloom's TD6 came out this year, and I think it's going to be one of those top 10, maybe top 15 games of the year that might not make it on every list because we have two Nintendo games coming this year and we have, you know, the Harry Potter game coming, all this stuff. And so one of these games, a game like this might might slip underneath of the underneath of the radar a little bit. But when I did not include it, initially include this series in my best tower defense games list, um, I got actual emails. Like it's one thing to get comments, right? You know, you get comments about something, you know, blah, 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 blah. There are people who are reaching out to me angry that I, not, that I did not include the balloons thing. And basically it's a tower defense game. Uh, it plays like a really standard tower defense game. It's really easy to get into and use. You drag, you know, little monkeys from the right side there. You put them on the map. Uh, there's a little radius there and they attack any balloons that kind of go into that radius and pop them. The balloons change shape, have different abilities and all of this stuff. It's it's a really, really standard game uh, for that. I think there are, what, about two dozen levels. Um, each monkey can be upgraded a bunch of times, but you don't get all the upgrades at first. You actually have to play through the game and use all of the monkeys to gain them levels. And as you gain them levels, they learn all these other additional abilities. So you'd have to play basically the whole game on easy and then medium and then go back and play it again on hard. Uh, I've been playing this game for a couple of weeks now. And I have gotten three levels into hard and I'm stuck there. So mm. it, it does get intensely difficult over a long period of time. And um, I mean, that's that's basically the premise of it. It's five bucks. Uh, there are optional in-app purchases. You don't need them in the slightest to beat the games. And um, honestly, after you get through it on easy and medium, uh, most of the in-app purchase stuff is unlocked naturally through the gameplay anyway. So I'm going to save four bucks and you get the whole game. Nice. Yeah, it's fun. It's a fun game. It's kind of, uh, you know, at first you just see the balloons coming down and you're like, all right, cool. So this will never be difficult because the balloon, you just keep capturing them there. But as you get, you progress, you know, there's bullet like steel balloons that uh, are resistant to certain, you know, types of, of hits and a, a number yeah, of balloons gets, that come out that have to be hit three times in order to disappear. And it gets super co complicated. And so you got to set up your, your kind of tower defense line. Um, I love the tower the hard defense. Mode, they start they start stacking these things too. So it'll be a metal balloon that's also camouflaged that also takes three or four hits to to defuse. And so you can't. There's no one unit that can you can just lay over and over again. You kind of have to have enough of a variety to take care of the camo part and then the metal part and then the other parts. Otherwise, they just walk right through and nobody shoots at them. Yep. yep. But I mean, it's it's a cute little game. There's you know it's family friendly there's no like blood right. gore war stuff in it it's it's monkeys throwing darts at literally throwing darts at balloons if you look closely enough yep. so you know it's one of those family friendly games you know nothing too intense nothing too ridiculous except for you can totally sink like three hours of time into playing this game and <laughs> really realize it that's what happened to me this morning i'm like oh i'll install it and i'll play through the little tutorial because it's always annoying doing the app review and showing the tutorial and then i just got sucked into it and then i was like Damn, oh, right. i need to be um, working right now that does remind me um google play games achievements and uh google play cloud saving services and i think it has like a backup or a secondary i think you can log in with facebook and back up that way and you can get transfer codes and back up that way if you want to uh, I found that Google is the easiest one because I, I started playing this when I had my G8 and then I just logged into Google and continued on on my S10 Plus. Uh, this thing does eat your battery up, though. Uh, pretty well. <laughs> nice. All right. This is a good pick here. It's Bloons TD6. Is that right? Yes. Sorry, man. Uh, I love tower defenses, man. They were so yeah. much fun. Yeah, man. They There were so many of them for a while there. Yeah. Yeah, and they kind of fell off, and they're, they're almost kind of sort of having a little bit of a renaissance, at least with the release like this. You know, and, and I mentioned Iron Marines last year. I really wish I could remember the name of that other. I'm going to look it up really quick. I'm sorry. It's all good. <laughs> While you look it up, we'll uh, we'll check with Flo on her app, which I also have installed. 
There she is. <laughs> well, I, you know, I didn't want to presume. Also, the sun is setting and it's you're going to get a glare. Sorry, everyone. It's all good. Um, so I brought a very, very utilitarian app and it's just, you know, if you live somewhere where you have access to rideshare, sometimes you're like, I'm not sure which one to get. I'm not sure which one is nearby. And so that's what any ride is for. Any ride basically helps you choose between Uber and Lyft to see which one is cheaper to see which ones are closer. Um, it just kind of helps you, uh, you know, whittle down all those apps and having to kind of go through them to figure out like what you want to do. Um, so I already tested this today. I accidentally called rideshare to my house, um, twice. So it does work. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you Jason to call a ride. Cause it's like, totally does a thing. Um, so if you don't have an Uber, uh, account linked up, you will not see, um, the prices for that, but whatever you do have linked up, you will see. Um, and you can check from different kind of, uh, categories there at the bottom, like how much it would cost to take a certain, uh, maybe a Lyft black car or a Lyft. What else do they have? XL, which is like the really big one. Lux um, Black. Yes. Yeah. yeah I'm, I then, only go to McDonald's in a luxury uh, Lyft. So just go ahead and tap on that. I, just tap uh, on that. Yeah. You're not going to. Yeah. So from here, don't don't uh, select request now because what it's going to do is in the background, it's going to send off that um, request to the Lyft app. And then the Lyft app is going to do all the heavy lifting. And then the Lyft app will pop up and take it from there. So this is literally just a liaison app. It's just so you can put it on your home screen and have this be the first thing that you go to. Um, and coming up, they said that Juno and Via will be supported for New York writers and um, that they're adding a couple of more uh, features that are coming up. And this was recently updated 11 days ago. So June 14th. So it, it's getting, oh, wow, that's... Well, yeah, it's all the way to San Francisco. It's pretty far. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I tried to get my Uber account working and it wasn't a matter of this app. It was that I never use Uber. And so it had so, an old credit card to verify me by that I don't have anymore. I had so, the same problem with Uber signing up for it today. Um, I think something's going on, which is a bummer for me because then you don't get to see my app exhibit exhibited. But um, but I used it and it works for Lyft at least. So And and the cool thing is here it's it's comparing between both. So if you're if you're going purely on price, yeah. You can know which is the uh which is the cheaper fare and Or if you zoom in all the bucks. way, you can also see all the little cars on the map. Oh, like really? near you. Yeah, if you do it from a starting location, I don't think it works once you figure out your route. I oh, think it's I just see. starting. Yeah, because it'll basically show you like which Lyft and Ubers are toiling around looking for fares. But ultimately, it's up to them to accept how far you want to go. So. And oh, now there is no the Lyft off. driver near you right now. Yeah, there isn't a whole lot of Lyft action happening. Yeah, in not right. not out in the industrial area. Um, I live near a downtown area and it was pretty bustling, which is why I was able to get someone within a minute. Yeah. And I felt bad. And I said, don't come, please. I mean, there's usually at least a couple bouncing around, just not seeing them. Oh, well. Oh, well. It's hard out there for a Lyft. <laughs> uh <laughs> All right, so that is any ride. It is free, and it will combine uh, multiple rideshare apps. I think that's actually a pretty awesome utility to have. I was just a few months ago. We were wishing for this app, so uh, I'm glad to hear they're adding Juno because that's what I use in New York. But uh, yeah, this, this, that's that's handy. I'm surprised surprised it took this long for this to exist. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I guess the APIs yeah, actually, are open. So <clears throat> I'm actually kind of surprised it does exist. Yeah, right? Yeah. You think that they would have I, – I wonder how long it's going to last is a better question. Yeah, before somebody right? shuts an API down and prevents stuff exactly. like this from being useful yeah. again. Because I was I was thinking about the messaging apps. You were talking about Telegram earlier, and it's like you know, I was thinking back you know, an all-in-one messaging app. 
that's a dead industry now because yeah. everything has its own proprietary thing. So I think it's really neat that, you know, there's at least one thing, you know, all in one, you get the Juno, the Lyft, the Uber. Like, that's really cool. I like that. Yeah. 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 I like it too. That is and the developer is in San Francisco. If anybody would like to know. Support your devs. <laughs> Support your San Francisco devs. All right. So twit.to slash triple A poll four two six to place your vote for your favorite app this week. Is it Mubert, Doodle Lens, Bloons T D six, or any ride? Go to twit.to slash AAA poll four two six and uh, place your vote. And we'll check in on that next week. Uh, if you could vote, what would you vote for, Kevin? Uh, he he can vote, actually. Probably. Yeah, you, could. you could. Mubert. Mubert. I like, I like to Mubert, Do it, Kevin. Mubert. Do I like, it. I like the way you think. Yeah, go ahead and drop that cursor on Mubert and make it so. Click the button. Make it happen. Yes. All right. So there we go. All right. Someone, have, uh, I think, flows in the lead currently. <laughs> I think. And, any ride is in the lead with three votes. Doodle Lens and Mubert at two votes. Bloons, nothing yet, but it's still early. Don't worry. I have faith in you, Joe. <laughs> um, I just want to give Joe uh, just a um, a thumbs up, a 100 for that app pick, because that's the kind of app pick that comes from somebody who knows their apps. That's like that's like a deep dive find in the Play Store. <laughs> Yeah, a Kudos. little bit. I mean, whew, I got some stiff competition this this week. You're like, oh man, Lyft and Uber in the same app. Oh, I'm going down so hard this week. <laughs> you just never know, though. You never know. Although you know, Flow has Flow has some impenetrable force. Uh, the voting this the, year. the voting audience is fickle. You don't know what will resonate with them. Yeah, you never Flow, know. Flow has Flow has some good vibes going, but we're still, we're very early in the year, and there's still a whole lot of weeks to go. Holy My candle's yeah. still on. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, F Flo keeps that candle lit. You know you're in for you know, a challenge. If I'd known that, I would have lit one of mine. They're all sitting yeah. back there. <laughs> I didn't I tell mean, you that. I apologize. Room right yeah. now, so usually and, that's and in my life. It's all like, about setting intention, Joe. She's gonna put the Sisters of Mercy back on, and then we'll be all set. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe, um, it's been great having you on. Thank you so much for hopping on with us tonight, and we hope you'll uh, come back soon and school us uh, once again in the arena, possibly. Anytime you guys want. <laughs> right on, Joe. AndroidAuthority.com. Where do you want people to kind of find what you're working on? And are you working on anything uh, that you want to talk about right now? Um, it is the end of the month, which means I'm hilarious. I've already worked on all of the big things that I'm going to work on uh, until July starts. But um, if anybody wants to follow me on Twitter, I love to argue with people and chit chat and and all this stuff about anything, basically, um, at that Joe Hendy on Twitter. Um, we also have uh, a you know, a tech podcast for Android Authority podcast. That's right. Um, Sir so Jason, you've been there before. Yep. And uh, we actually had a uh, Megan Maroney on there not too long ago. So, and if any of you guys want to come on too, you know, you're more than welcome to. But uh, that's AndroidAuthority.com slash podcast. And we do our uh, show every Friday, I believe. Nice. Right on. Yeah, it was a fun, fun show to do. And uh, <laughs> you guys do awesome work. And we're just... We're, we're fans, so it's awesome to get you on, and thank you for uh, for hopping on with us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, Flo, why don't we start with you, since the candle's still burning. What you got going on? Dang, you are fast <laughs> with that stuff, <laughs> Kevin. Wow. Tonight. Literally. Um, what have I got? I, you know, Fourth uh, of July is coming up. We've got a holiday coming up. I'm going on vacay. My best friend's getting married, so I'm not really working. I mean, I am working, but not just FlorenceION.com. Find me on Twitter <laughs> at OhThatFlow. Find me on Instagram at OhThatFlow. Come follow me on Twitch because I am streaming all of this work that I'm doing with these gaming PCs, and I am just playing through Skyrim again. So This is just really. an excuse to play games, isn't it? Yes, but it's, oh, I'm hosting All About Android right now. <laughs> um, well, actually, last Sunday, I had a whole stream of building this com this keyboard. So there's a nice. lot of, um, I'm coming up with a lot of things that I can, I That's can do. Cool. Listen, it's lonely out here in the suburbs, okay? Yeah, I understand. I understand. That's, that's why all the goth. I get it. 
You just don't know how I feel. Slams the door. So if you guys know upstairs. that like if I'm having a bad day, the high school music comes out and I'm just like transported back back to that time of like the early 2000s emo that is really quite terrible. And when you're having a bad day, sometimes you come on all about Android and you and you close out Skype and you're having a good day again. See, th that's, that's what's fun. That's that's the difference between Flo and I is that when she's having a bad day, she puts on bad early 2000s emo. When I'm having a good day, I put on good late 90s emo, <laughs> which is considerably better music than whatever Flo was listening to. So, yeah, um, and <laughs> I'll use that as an opportunity. I'm not going to disagree with you, Ron. <laughs> I'm just saying you could listen to more Braid and more Texas is the Reason. Life would be better. Yeah. Um, OK, so uh, <laughs> follow me on Twitter at, at RonXO and Instagram at RonXO. And I'm just getting by, man. I'm working. I'm raising babies. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with the heat. Summer is upon us in New York City. Um, but yeah, but so you can see my nonsense. Uh, and as you can see on my Twitter page there, if you scroll down a little, I retweeted one perfect shot. Let's please celebrate 40 years of the Muppet movie being in existence. Uh, yes. One of the greatest films of all time. That so, is a good one. Go. That is a yes. good one. That's a great, that's a, that's a Gonzo singing, I hope to go back there someday, which is one of my favorite songs. Uh, so. That is definitely one of those movies that when, uh, that having children, it was awesome to be able to introduce my kids to Listen. that movie. And they didn't, they didn't get it at first. The first time I introduced the Muppet movie, they were not interested. Yeah. It was a couple of years later that it resurfaced, and then now they're huge fans. So, Listen, my, my babies might be six months old, but I've got it digitally. I've got it on physical media. I've got it on VHI. I am ready You're for ready. when they have a, the concept of a movie and a puppet will be there to watch the Muppet movie. <laughs> yeah, but do you have it in 16K? Which oh, I gotta get that. I gotta, next... I gotta future proof it. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ron. Thank you, Flo. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Kevin. You did awesome today. It was great having you uh, running the board. Really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm sorry that um, that Victor is out. Victor, we hope you feel better. Um, also, thank to Burke and uh, Jeff for helping out in the studio. And uh, you can find me here on Twitter just doing shows. You know, I'm actually going to be out next week, so I will not be on the show next week. I'm going to be on vacation. Thank you, Flo and Ron, for holding down the fort while I'm out. I'm sorry to do Always. this to you once again, <laughs> but I really do appreciate it. Uh, but that is it for this week. Leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us emails at AAA at twit.tv. Find us on Twitter at Android Show. Uh, you can find a show page where we are laughing hysterically at twit.tv slash AAA. It's a thing that we do a lot on this show. Uh, you can find all the subscribe links. <laughs> you can find it. it's, it's a great picture, I have to say. Uh, <laughs> you can see that we record live every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, 0, 0,100 UTC. There's your subscribe audio link. Kevin is showing everyone right now. There is your subscribe, subscribe video link. If you're wondering where it is and can't find it with your eyes, there it is. And so much more information listed there. That's really the place that you go uh, to subscribe to this show. And we hope that you do. If you haven't subscribed, do it. And uh, I think that's it. We've reached the end. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody. Bye with all my tablets. Wide shot. Oh, you're going to play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See you later. So the tablets. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> the, the music. Oh, oh, it's one of these. That, remember when the outro used to do this? Am I supposed to do that? No, no, no. Keep yeah, it going. I, I Go on the wide the shot, though. This. Because this this was how it was sometimes. The, uh, the music would start playing. It was nice. It would be a little awkward because we had to, like, wait for the music to end, which is what we're doing right now. And <laughs> now we've reached the end but kind of and it's still playing see. and i think it's still going but we'll see you later bye <laughs> <laughs>